Welcome back to our series on microservices architecture. Today we are diving into an essential design pattern that helps streamlining communication between services, the aggregator pattern. But what exactly is the aggregator pattern and how does it work? Let's break it down. In a monolithic application, all your code, including the business logic, is in one place, making it easier to manage relationships between different parts of the system. However, when you move to microservices architecture, things get tricky because your application is divided into multiple smaller services. Each service handles a specific piece of functionality. While this approach has its advantages, it also introduces challenges, especially when your business logic needs to operate across multiple services. To address these challenges, the aggregate pattern from domain-driven design can be very useful. So, if you have a complex network of interconnected objects and classes, in microservices architecture, these objects might be spread across multiple different services. Directly referencing an object in another service would violate the principles of microservices, creating dependencies that are difficult to manage and could lead to performance issues or even system failures. By organizing your business logic into aggregates, you ensure that all related objects stay within a single boundary, typically within the same microservice. This eliminates the need for objects in one service to directly reference objects in another service, which would otherwise create tight coupling and dependencies across services. Furthermore, each aggregate is designed so that any operation that modifies it can be handled within a single transaction. This aligns perfectly with the microservices architecture because it ensures that all changes to an aggregate are either fully completed or not done at all within a single service using asset principles. Previously, I have made a video on Saga pattern. It's applied when you need to maintain data consistency across different services. And by combining aggregates with Sagas, you can manage complex business logic across services while maintaining data consistency. If you haven't, please check out my video on Saga pattern after this. All right, let's try to understand the aggregator pattern with more concrete examples. We know that in a microservices architecture, fulfilling a single client request often involves multiple services working together. The aggregator pattern simplifies this process by acting as a coordinator that collects responses from various services and combines them into a single unified result. Here is a step-by-step -step look at how it operates. The aggregator service receives a request from the client. This could be a web application, mobile app, or any other consumer. It then sends out requests to multiple underlying microservices, each responsible for a specific part of overall task. Once all the services respond, the aggregator compiles and processes the data, merging into one cohesive response. This may involve data transformation, formatting, or applying business logic. Finally, the aggregator sends this unified response back to the client, providing all the needed information in one go. Now that we understand the basics, let's explore the different types of aggregators, simple and complex. A simple aggregator handles straightforward scenarios where the process is linear and the data from each service can be directly combined without extensive processing. For example, imagine an online store's home page that displays various product categories. The aggregator service requests data from separate services handling electronics, clothing, and home goods, then compiles this information into a single organized layout for the client. The process is direct and doesn't require complex logic. On the other hand, Complex aggregator deals with more intricate scenarios involving multiple services with dependencies. Consider a personalized dashboard for a financial app. The aggregator service fetches data from banking, investments, loans, and credit score services. It can then process data to calculate net worth, analyze spending habits, and suggest investment opportunities. And this involves complex computations and conditional logic to deliver a tailored experience to the user. Now, while aggregator pattern excels at orchestrating requests across multiple services, it often works hand in hand with another powerful pattern, CQRS or command query responsibility segregation. CQRS further refines the separation of concerns by splitting the system into two distinct models, one optimized for handling commands and another for queries. To learn more about it, check out my CQRS video and microservices playlist. Now, there are also specific patterns and strategies for implementing aggregator pattern effectively. In scatter-gather approach, the aggregator sends requests to multiple services simultaneously, scattering the request and then waits to gather all responses. Once all data is received, it combines the result and sends them back to the client. For example, a news aggregator app fetching the latest articles from various sources at the same time and then presenting them together to the user. In chain pattern, the requests are made sequentially, where the output of one service becomes the input for the next. This pattern is useful when there are dependencies between the services. For example, an online order processing system where the payment service processes a transaction and then passes the result to the inventory service to update stock 
and finally to shipping service to arrange the delivery. Branch pattern is another method that is similar to scatter gather but it allows for different processing paths based on the responses received. It can handle conditional logic and complex workflows. For example, a travel booking system where the aggregator simultaneously check flights, hotels and rental cars. If a predefined flight is unavailable, it can trigger an alternative search or notify the user to adjust their preferences. While the aggregator pattern offers significant benefits, it's important to be aware of potential challenges. The aggregator service becomes critical to the system. If it fails, it can disrupt the entire operation. So implementing redundancies and failover mechanism in aggregator is essential. If one of the underlying services fails or responds slowly, it can affect the aggregator's ability to provide timely and complete responses. Strategies like timeouts, retries, and fallback responses might help mitigate these issues. And as the number of services and complexity of aggregator logic grow, maintaining and scaling the aggregator can itself become more challenging. So proper design and monitoring are key for managing this complexity. And finally, aggregating multiple service responses can introduce latency, especially in complex scenario. Optimizing service calls and processing logic is necessary to ensure acceptable performance. Understanding and effectively applying the aggregator pattern enables you to build robust, efficient, and user-friendly applications that can handle complex operations with ease.